Hey guys. I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't wait for you to hear what I'm gonna say. I love that. I love that for me. What's, What's up, up everyone? Hello. Hello. Oh, we're here. We're here and we're ready to party. Mm-hmm. Do no. <laughs> you missed the word queer part, but that's fine. I know. Well, they know. <laughs> also true. They know. We got extra lights in here. Do we seem really bright to you guys? I'm going to be honest, I hate it. I'd rather be in the shadows. <laughs> I know. Well, I'll tell you, I've been editing and I know that like the microphone from your side, mm. like your light coming to my microphone has been giving me uh, like a, a like a, a bulldog's jowls. I got you. <laughs> And okay. I'm like, I need another light okay. on this Maybe side. Maybe it'll help mine. <laughs> oh, there we go. How are our jowls? <laughs> What's my jowl? Not that like bulldog jowls aren't adorable. And also don't answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. I know sometimes you all are really honest and I'd like you to be less. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes um, for sure. So, uh, hey, guess what? Today we're going to be in Charlotte. <laughs> oh, Surprise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Last week, I think I fucked up, you guys. <laughs> and I've just been really tired and really kind of, there's a lot that's been going on. For sure. So, go um, to patreon.com slash ladies. <laughs> go to <laughs> patreon.com slash ladies and tangents. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. it, but I, don't. Okay. I said last week that today is going to be when we're in. Meaning last Tuesday. And I was so very wrong. How about I didn't even catch it? You didn't. I didn't twice. catch it when, when I was <laughs> editing or recording it with you. I was just like, sure. I'm Stop sure that's it. correct. I don't know. <laughs> but today it is correct. Today we are there. We're in Charlotte right now. What's the weather like? Mm-hmm. 69 and sunny. Ow. <laughs> is it? I don't know. I do think that it was looking to be in the high 60s, which is uh, my favorite kind of temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... That's where we'll be. I think there's still tickets available to this show. Mm-hmm. There should be. Um, and if not, we know Portland sold out. So yeah, Portland. What's up, you Portland? Fucking crazy people. I love you. <laughs> and then uh, we have another show the next tomorrow in Raleigh, and then Thursday in Nashville. Tickets are still available for those. So mm-hmm. go to Lady Dis- and what's our fucking <laughs> go to ladiesandtangents.com to get tickets. Yeah. That's, That's it. it. That's it. That's Unless you're listening to this in the future, in which case you missed it. And maybe we're somewhere else. Go yeah. and check the website Go anyway. Check it anyways. See Don't what look for merch that? there yet. Oh, we, hey, hey. It's coming. We're almost, we're almost there. Here's the thing. We have, we have a merch company working for us now. and <laughs> With us. Well, yeah, not for us. For us seems weird. <laughs> but I mean, contractually, we are with them. Yes bonded <laughs> we by have, law we have entered a union <laughs> yeah so um they not like a workers union no <laughs> right i don't know <laughs> they have to um a lot of back and forth yeah they you know they do designs they show us we give feedback they go back they come back they show us we they give set feedback, up they, the store it's it's a whole lot of people doing a whole lot of things so it is coming very, very soon, I promise. Mm-hmm. So just be on the lookout for that. We'll yeah. fucking let you know when We're it's up. We're very 100%. excited for oh, the pieces that are coming I out. Think you'll- I think you'll like them. And the pieces that we're planning for the future. Yes. Yeah. Because that's also what we're doing. It's not even like we just have a mm-hmm. few that we're putting out. We're planning. We're doing collections. Yeah, we are. Oh, it's going to be We're going to be, be so doing fun. drops. <laughs> <laughs> Drugs. I know. As soon as I, I said like, it word? In, the, in the way that I did, I was like, she thought I was going to say drugs. <laughs> she see my eyes light up? <laughs> yeah. We're well, doing no, merch, drugs. <laughs> our merch drops. We're doing drugs. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. I don't know which kind. I don't be a surprise. Drugs, I feel like, could be anything. Food Tylenol. can be a drug. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do need a Tylenol right now. I'll tell you that. Excedrin. I'm going to take it. I swear to God. <laughs> the way that my body speaking of drugs for shows if you see me the way that i'm running running on excedrin zofran and emodium <laughs> for every single show yep i mean i get home and i'm just like that's all i've eaten <laughs> those she, three things she walks out of the bathroom and she goes i don't know how i have taken multiple things that are supposed to plug me up and i am still liquid shitting I'm <laughs> shitting my brains out <laughs> Because I'm stressed and I'm nervous and that's what happens. So I am trying to get everything I can to just plug this shit up. We'll get there. 
It's okay. I have yet. Nope. I'm not even going to say that. I was going to yeah, say don't. I haven't had to shit on the stage. <laughs> on the stage. <laughs> why would you do it on the stage? I mean, while I'm on stage. You guys want to watch me? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that kind of show. <laughs> it's not. It's not yet. extra for that. Go to patreon.com. <laughs> this is tangent. So watch me shit on a stage. Hey, sell out the show and we'll shit on your a stage near you. <laughs> That's what I know. Stop looking at my boobs. I, I honestly <laughs> can't. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cover yourself up. I'm sorry. Jerry didn't know while she was getting ready what I have prepared. I did a little sneak sees. Even though I mentioned it to you when we you were did. traveling. You did ask me if we wanted to do this. And I said, sure. But then I completely forgot. Forgot about it. Yeah. So here's the deal. I brought it out to do today. And she came looking like this. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you... <laughs> made it's a mistake. very ironic because of what we're about to talk about um so i do want to let's do some prefaces you know i love preface. a preface i love a preface i got to that just reminded me of face from d- d- is it nickelodeon i fucking love face right? do you know you can still watch face on paramount plus <gasps> no yes there was like a whole like face musical oh my god i fucking I, loved it i love face I love face. I love face. For anybody's not our age and you're so confused by that. Sorry. Get Paramount Plus. <laughs> this isn't an ad, but search for face. I guess Google would also work and it's that, free. Yeah. But it I don't feel like you experienced what we felt back then. You're gonna True. look at this and be like, you guys were fucking weird, and you're correct. <laughs> for sure. A lot of this will make sense. A lot of who we are as people <laughs> if you just watch face. <laughs> from Nickelodeon. Yeah. Right? It wasn't Disney Channel. Correct, Nickelodeon. Okay, okay. okay. I get those confused because they were my life. I yeah, and they were one channel the apart. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where we lived. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about the male gaze mm-hmm. and not the kind we like. <laughs> not, not our male, male gaze. gaze. We're talking about the male G-A-Z-E gaze mm-hmm. because it was a, a term that we had heard for a long time, I feel like we've yeah, heard it. Yeah, it was popping on TikTok for a bit. Yeah, and I was like, what the fuck? I mean, I think I know what it means. I can use I, context clues, yeah. however. But there's it goes deeper. It's more. And so I feel like what I wanted to do, if you can't tell, I am very nervous. These episodes always make me nervous because I am anticipating that we're going to get yelled at. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's going to be one of two ways. This is how that people we're gonna like get to yelled yell at, at us. Yeah. Oh, okay. So there's either going to be someone who gets defensive because they're hmm. feeling called out. Man. About something. Right. <laughs> man call out. So let me out. just go ahead and say. Yell at us. Not all men. I fucking know. <laughs> this is more a societal thing on the whole. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> immediately. You know how men be with holes. Stop <laughs> getting defensive right now. You can listen to your girlfriend's podcast for a second, sir. It's yeah. Okay. It, if it's If it's not you. Be someone who calls other people out. Yeah. Don't yell at us about it. Yell at them for, for making you look bad. Totally. That okay. part. Um, and the other thing- I say to myself. <laughs> Same. Well, the, and the other thing is, if you participate in it some way yourself as a female presenting person of any kind, mm-hmm. um, it's okay. And I felt like, damn, I've definitely participated in this. Am I currently participating Jerry, in it? Yes. <laughs> but we'll get there that's what i'm saying so don't when i'm talking to you about this don't be like well what about just no wait till the fucking end of the episode yeah have any qualms and number three you better not pick up a single fucking put those qualms back on the floor i swear to get (laughs) (laughs) i swear to you right now (laughs) you put those qualms down also, can I tell you, I have had a twitch in my hand. Okay. For I don't it's been at least twenty four right hours. Now. Okay. I touched my I ball. was I was telling a friend of mine that I have my joints a lock up. Okay. Yeah. And so when I used to be in uh, like high school and stuff and mm-hmm. or middle school when we would carry trays, mm. my arms would lock and I wouldn't be able to put my tray down. Mm. And then I'd have to pop my old elbows. Oh my okay. Hell. Yeah. Well, my hands do that sometimes. One time I was opening a Mountain Dew, I remember. <laughs> I w- it wasn't even for me. I was a little bit pissed that this happened, but I opened the Mountain Dew and my hand got stuck <gasps> in the position of opening it. Is it like carpal tunnel? I don't know. Okay. Somebody- I don't know. It happened when I was <laughs> holding <help>. a fork <laughs> oh my at God. lunch with my dad. And at this point, it's happened so much to me that I just go, oh, fuck, my hand's stuck again. And he goes, <laughs> what? And he just looks over. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and I am doing a sign language like, Q. Yeah, okay. 
and he's like, "Do you need to? Do you need to go somewhere?" And I was like, "Nah, it'll stop eventually." And then it did. But right now, my left hand, my um, pointer finger into my thumb keeps flick- flicking, what <laughs> twitching. The hell, yeah. Damn, girl. Maybe I need potassium. <laughs> yeah, was, honestly. I bet it's someone's going to tell us that there's a vitamin something going on. Oh, yeah, on. yeah, yeah. I, I always thought if there was a twitch um, you, that you, like a muscle spasm, that you needed potassium. But I'm also fucking stupid. So you guys can tell me <laughs> what else, if I should eat a banana or not. Yeah. Um, oh, With the boobies out, girl. Yeah, you need a banana. <laughs> yeah, girl. Anyway, sorry. The number three thing that I think is the person that what might yell at us. two? Two are the people that are going to feel defensive, but they oh, identify themselves. as okay. an inner. Got it, got it, got it. And the number three would be the person who's going to be like, I know more about you. I know more about this than you. <laughs> oh yeah, and I also, also know, I know more about me than me. <laughs> That's so true. Let me tell you uh, about yourself and about Let me say this. right now, you're right. I'm not fucking <laughs> arguing with you, okay? So you don't have to come in the comments all hot being like, actually... You're right. Immediately, you're right. Okay. Yeah, come at it from that way. Like, hey, I want to add to the conversation or clarify or you expand. Ha- there's so many people that will come in hot and be like, you're f- here's the tone that I get. You're a fucking idiot for even assuming you know anything. <laughs> I know more. I know yeah. more. And I'm like, hey, I never said you didn't. <laughs> in fact, you probably know more about everything than me. In fact, I've actively said that I don't know dick <laughs> about, about shit. shit. So. so just know that that's how I'm going into broaching this topic. It's going to be two friends talking about it. Broaching? Is that- okay, vocab. <laughs> I mean- What's up, SAT word? Stop it. <laughs> I'm going to be, we're going to be talking about an article. That's it. Giving our opinions. Mm-hmm. As our people- article. Yeah, our <laughs> article <laughs> opinions. As two people who was, have probably experienced something that we're going to read about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Get off my fucking back, dude. (laughs) Can you tell? I'm just so hyper aware. Yeah. Because this is how these types of topics go. And every single time I'm like, guys, I thought we were just having a good time. I don't know. (laughs) I thought you knew that we were just trying to have fun. I thought you knew we were just fucking pulling your dick. It's not that big of a deal. Calm down. Silly girls. (laughs) So (laughs) we're just having a silly, goofy time. And that's all this is. But if you learn something along the way, da da da, or whatever. (laughs) Some kind of jingle. The more you know. <laughs> yeah. Don't co- That's someone else's tagline. It's not ours. Oh, my God. TM. <laughs> We're going to get sued. <laughs> no. Shit. Anyway. So, nope. That's my Sims. Cri- Do you guys know the Sims came out with a crystal pack? No. You can charge your crystals and it will give your Sims like moodlets. Do you know Not that- sponsored, but I thought that was pretty cool and I started researching it last night and that's what immediately popped up on my phone when I was looking for this article. Do you know that like crystal girls are something that people are like leery of? That's a red flag for some people? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I saw it on Love Island All-Stars. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, that makes sense. I feel like anything that people are really interested in that other people don't understand. <gasps> that's a lie. I think it was Love is Blind. Yeah, that would make more sense yep. actually. Um. But anything that people are like really passionate about that other people don't understand, I think is like, no, that scares me. <laughs> yeah, that's... And I don't care to learn. <laughs> yep. It's like, okay, yep. well, you hey, can just. That right there, red flag. <laughs> yeah, red flag. Anyway. Um, but also, yeah, just find somebody else. Stop that doesn't looking know about rocks. at my boobs. I literally can't. It's like they're out. I'm to trying to. I'm looking at your necklace. Oh, two, two, two. Yeah. And it's making me feel boop, happy because it reminds me of my grandmother. <laughs> my grandmother. <laughs> my grandmother. We just had the 16th anniversary anniversary of her death. <laughs> she says through giggles. <laughs> well, I oh, just thought no. it was funny that I like said anniversary because I was anticipating the th- at the end of death. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what? Oh, just fucking nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to finish your sentence after my death? comment i don't know all i was gonna say was that my mind does that a lot and that's why i stumble on my words because my mind is like i've already moved on to three words from now i'm thinking about so slow i'm thinking about getting this word out in a second (laughs) that i might as well just try and get it out now (laughs) very frustrating Mm -hmm. okay so there is a i have a full article here that we're Mm going to talk about um it's from verywellmind.com it seemed the safest option because it kind of wraps it all up in a package that is neat 
and presentable and that I think we'll be able to follow along with. I love that. Some of these were very, I was like, too many big Scholarly words. Scholarly articles. Absolutely not. <laughs> and I'm not. And that's not our article. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> no, because other ones that were less, I had to pay for it. <laughs> oh, I, no. <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. And it was less than I had to pay for it. I would have paid for it, but I had to like make up a. I had to like make a profile. Dude, that happened to me no, today when I was trying to make a spreadsheet. Yeah. I Googled how to make an expense spreadsheet. There you okay. go. And one of the things that popped up was just like, hey, we've already got this template. Pop in your numbers and it'll automatically do this stuff. And I was like, that's dope. I love that. I click on it. It's a fucking blog. Oh. And so, of course, I'm just scrolling looking for a highlighted word that I believe is what I have to click on. <laughs> right. And so I find it, click on it, and it's like, Subscribe here. It's mm-hmm. roughly a thousand dollars a month. What? To org? To- well, it was targeting business owners. Okay, and, okay. And but- maybe it wasn't dollars because I think it was euros. <laughs> but either way, <laughs> either way, that felt like t- more than I wanted to spend for <laughs> more euros than I had. I have zero euros, so that's not for me. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Okay, so the <laughs> article is called What is the Male Gaze by Sarah Van Busker? <laughs> Van Busker. <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh at no, it was just funny. the way that you said it. I was very unsure about it. I was like, I will fuck this up. And Sarah, Busker, if I, did, I hardly know her. <laughs> Sarah, I apologize immediately on my on everything about me <laughs> as a human person. So some of these I'm going to try to like just give you a summary okay other things i'm gonna read verbatim because i like the way that this article says them got it so this is going to be the (laughs) that's how i feel about writing term papers whenever you find something you're like why would i rephrase this it's already written it's so beautifully here if i rephrase it i'm gonna fuck it up somehow because the way i say stuff is stupid yeah so So. this this whole thing's about being quotations okay just Just, just honestly know that Stop asking me. Go read this book. Go read this article. Yeah. <laughs> article. Our tickle. So, uh, in quotes, it's her straight tickle. from <laughs> Sarah tickles. Sarah, not, no. Now it feels weird. Yeah. This is straight from Sarah's mouth. From early adolescence on, we are biologically driven to look at and evaluate other people mm-hmm. as potential mates. Okay. But the male gaze twists this natural urge, which in turn, turns women into passive items to possess and use as props. This concept is not just about how women and their bodies are used to satisfy male fantasies, but also how this gaze, whether it's directed at them or others, makes women feel about themselves. Okay. That's why it's so important. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if you're listening right now. Raise your hand if a cis heterosexual male has ever been controlling to you or your body. Whoop. I thought so. Me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So go ahead and put your hands down, everyone. Go ahead. Everyone listening. Everyone (laughs) ever. Um, So obviously, not that it all comes from this, but this is definitely something that fuels it, I believe, in a big way. So what where did the term come from? Okay, The term male gaze was originally. uh, What am I trying to say? Gay. (laughs) <laughs> yes. <Sorry>. No. <laughs> Wrong. Or was originally <laughs> made up by Okay. Uh coined. British coined. That is, is actually it? yes. Okay. Coined by British feminist film theorist Laura Mulvey. And it was described uh as oh, in her 1973 essay, Visual Pleasure in Narrative Cinema. That was the name of it. Mm. Published in 1975. And it was described as um Basically, the way mainstream media objectifies women showing the female body through a heterosexual male lens as a passive non-actor secondary to the active male characters. Yes. Which, again, if you are a film person and you go back to the 70s and before, very prevalent, very prevalent in most movies. There's going to be like your protagonist, right? Male Mm -hmm. lead. Mm -hmm. And then he's got like a bimbo, I'm here for sex. Or comedic relief, or just to be a dumb... honestly, think of every 007 movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any yeah. Bond movie yes, ever. Yes. Like yeah. you think of Bond and you're like, wow, that is a fucking badass 
spy and then you think of a bond girl and you're like i want to fuck her yes <laughs> she's she's so fucking 100 hot okay and here's something that i i thought of last night in terms of children movies even yeah let's talk fucking space jam yeah lola bunny is a fucking badass she is just tearing up the courts and she's one of the best players on the team mm -hmm. what do people take away from the movie that's a hot fucking bunny that she's fucking <laughs> that she's fuckable <laughs> yep She's a fuckable bunny. Yep. And I'm guilty of it myself. We did a whole bit on it. We did. And that's when I talk about Lola Bunny. I talk about not how strong she is, not how powerful she is, not how mm -hmm. amazing she is at what mm -hmm. she does, not how um, she kind of puts people in the movie in their place. It's like, look at that fucking bunny tits. <laughs> yeah, look at the tits. on. Look at the rack on that bunny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Rack on that rabbit. And it, so maybe if you say it like that, it's such a like silly way yes. you can yes, tell yes, that yes. like yeah this is something that maybe is a kind of a problem yep the term then is popularized in relation to the depiction of female characters in films as inactive over often overtly sexual objects and male desire and the influence of the male gaze is not limited to how women and girls are featured in movies but it extends to the experience of being seen in this way both for the female figures on screen and the viewers by extension, to all girls and women yep. at large, yep. as these are not people, these are objects. This is how we view, address, uh, this is the roles that they have. It's almost like when when art is supposed to imitate life, yes. when you make the art yeah. uh, focus on one particular thing, it creates the belief system that that's the thing you're supposed to focus on outside of the art. Exactly. And even, let's go back to fairy tales. The the girl was always a prize to be won by the male. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. I get the girl at the end. I helpless. get the prize. She's helpless. She needs me. And once she, I help her in any way, she belongs to me. She's, She's mine. indebted to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And of course she wants me. Yeah. But they don't say that. <laughs> yeah. You're just supposed to believe that. And do, yeah. do we all, all yeah. the time? I don't know. Do we want them? No. No. Most of the time, <laughs> no. Of the time, no. <laughs> so naturally, this influence of the male gaze in media is going to seep into the female self-perception and self-esteem. Because if you are looking at other people like that, and you realize that that means that everyone's looking at you like that, you're going to view yourself as an object of desire for men. <laughs> well, we'll, get to, we'll get to your tits in a minute. <laughs> you just hold on to them. Um, I can say... <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So it's as much about the impact of seeing other women relegated to these supporting roles as it is about the way women feel then conditioned to fill those in real life. Right. How many times, raise your hand again, ladies, how many times have you felt like you have to be the person to help your significant other succeed in some way? It's your role. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's your role to propel them to greatness. It's my job Even to- Even if you have to dull yourself down. If I have to provide an atmosphere for them to succeed. To thrive. Even if it is a disservice to me. Yes. Yeah. I feel like, again, I can relate in a, in a very big way to that. Mm -hmm. um, and part of the time. It's, but it's not reciprocated. No, because it's very funny. If we, when we talked about how the husbands in our lives had to become stay-at-home dads, mm -hmm. the way that. That was such like a number one shocking thing for people to hear about. Mm -hmm. They were like, what? That's wild. You must be millionaires. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I was staying at home before this. It, like, what yeah. are you talking about? Corey's a nurse. We're not. But it was like, well, if the men are staying home, that must mean that you've got just billions of dollars. Because <laughs> yeah. why else would they? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it was also just like, I feel like, no disrespect to them. Right. But I feel like on a societal level, it like took them a lot longer to adjust, adjust to that role. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Because it's, it's completely unfamiliar. It was completely unfamiliar. Um, and I can speak for my situation. Um, it took them a while to figure out how to do a role that one, they had never done before, but two, they didn't often ever see 
themselves someone, having to do. Yeah, someone who looked like them that, having to do. That, yes. Like, and so in your mind, you're not ever prepping for that as you're growing up as I'm going to be the main caretaker for the children and the household. Mm -hmm. Like that is not something you are grown. I don't know about every other person, but I know for me, mm -hmm. that was something that was like an aspiration. I was like, yep. I'd actually love to be a stay at home mom. Not that mm -hmm. that's what everybody has to feel. I'm just saying for me, I always knew it could be a possibility. Yes. It was always something, even if it was for a short period of time for the first year, yep. for the first six months, like it was always something that I was like, well, if we if child care is expensive, of course it will be me to yeah. be home. And I and, want it to be. Yes. Yeah. So the pressure to conform to this patriarchal view or to simply accept or humor it and endure being seen in this way shapes how women think about their own bodies, capabilities and place in the world and that of other women. In essence, the male gaze discourages female empowerment and self-advocacy while encouraging self-objectification and deference to men in the patriarchy at large. So we go back to talking about how I felt the need when I left my house every day to put on. I was like, I have to put on makeup every mm -hmm. single day. I have to make sure my hair is done. I have to. Why do we think that was? Do we think I cared about that? Mm -hmm. Do we think it was something for me or was it like. And half the time, it wasn't even for men. I was worried that other women would see me and be like, wow, what a slob. She let herself go. Right. Because of Almost something. Almost like we're ranking each other. Which, because mm -hmm. we have been. Right. As young as, I can't even remember the first time that I knew that I was, I mean, probably grade school, that I was competing with other women for the attention of boys. Yes. Other yes, girls. Yes, yes. Other girls for the yes. attention of boys. Came down to being on the playground and having to do something say something like get the attention of this boy yep. that we were well not to mention also that there was like five boys in our class and the rest were girls yep but that's the thing and i used to circulate through three of them <laughs> <laughs> she really did the thing about it is we outnumber them yep in the world mm -hmm. we outnumber them so why are we We make them we make them we outnumber them yep we so so why is it that we are being like almost shoved into this box mm -hmm. of secondary you know yeah. what i mean mm -hmm. i don't know but i think it's something <laughs> but it's something we need to, to think about fucking ask ourselves there's something that you uh, sorry there was okay. something that you said that triggered a thought and well then i it saw it that's why escaped. i just slowed myself down because i was like she's gonna want to say something and then yeah, I I'm had sorry. it and then it escaped me. Do you want to wait for him? Oh no, 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 no. I no, knew no. it would come to you. <laughs> um so I kind of had the opposite of it. Mm. Um, and I would argue that there is a there's another level of this that is assigned to people who are not traditionally uh societally good looking or have mm. a societally uh, good body. Yes. Um where they are regulated to funny. Yes. Oh, yeah. I and mean, hello. so <laughs> I feel like I never, there was this underlying thing of like, I hope someone finds me attractive, but I almost leaned the other way of going overly funny, overly not caring about myself. Well, also, I was going to say, how often do we go like, look how unattractive I am for humor? Yes. Not just yes. whatever, but it's like, I have to de almost like downgrade and de degrade myself. Yeah. For you to look at me and think, damn, she's funny. I mean, right. I feel like female comedians do it all the time. Yeah. As like a. It was almost like I need to be attractive in some way and I don't feel physically I can be. So I'm going to be funny. Funny. Yeah. And, and hope that you're attracted to me in that but way. I was going to say, but again, what were you? Yes. What were you like? Uh, refining that humor for yes. who attention yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah not from p women probably yeah. correct well so <laughs> I didn't tell people that <laughs> sometimes but um, no because I, I didn't need even if I wanted the approval of women uh, for my humor like my personality I didn't need it exactly I needed the approval from men yes. to feel worthy of, yeah. of having it it was almost like yeah you can think i'm funny but if they think i'm funny then i'm then i made it then i'm actually funny yes it's weird it is weird when you go back and think of and again if people are listening to this and being like i didn't think like that totally cool again we're just talking about ourselves and our 
our and if someone can relate to that then great. I mean good yeah that's a way it's this is all just a talk to be able to reflect and like yep. look inward but this is interesting because this is a real quote or a real um like statistic mm-hmm. so this says in fact studies on gender bias and implicit assumptions show that many people without realizing it assume that men are smarter than women and that negative depictions of women in media are partly to blame I know this for a fact that people, because when people see Corey and he, they, he says he works in healthcare, they assume he's a doctor. Mm-hmm. Would they do that if it was a woman? Would they assume immediately she was a doctor if she says she's in healthcare? Mm-mm. If she says she works at a hospital? Mm-mm. It's, it's like so many things that you see in little ways where it's just like the assumption is male doctor, female mm-hmm. nurse. Mm-hmm. Why? Right. What, what happened to make that become... Because it isn't that there's more male doctors. Right. Or, or more smart men. Right. Is it that we're shown that more often? Mm-hmm. Is it that um, they're highlighted more? Well, and that's why I brought up, I think I brought it up when we were at the airport, um, that somebody had made a meme that was like, dang, I want to know what Kevin McAllister from... Um, home alone i want to know what their dad did to get a house like that and everyone's like look at the mom homie she's in like a fucking business suit yeah you think some you think a woman just has a bunch of business suits for no reason what why why do you assume it's the dad that made the money yes 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 yeah exactly that's exactly it the argument is that the male gaze controls the narrative which is that women are not equal actors or people Mm -hmm. in the world Mm -hmm. instead their agency is reduced to that of an erotic or a supporting object how many mm-hmm. times has the, fem- the, the female role been like, she's crazy. Look at her. She's being so. Wolf like, of Wall Street. Yes. Fucking goddamn. Oh, my God. The gaslighting. And then the fact that which, that's based on a real fucking story. Yeah. Margot Robbie is so incredible. But the role that she had to play in that was just like dumb bimbo. Neurotic. Slut. I'm, <laughs> yeah. And that she's crazy for questioning him when he's actively cheating on her and doing illegal shit all the fucking time yeah with their value as a female form reduced to how appealing to the male viewer and or how threatening or not it is to the stereotypical male perspective Mm -hmm. likewise this viewpoint also confines the male persona to their specific role as the protagonist the aggressor the sexual pursuer and consumer of women Mm -hmm. austin powers (laughs) that's a small one but like he honestly also 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 Look at the way these men, average, average men Mm -hmm. are portrayed as like these women are just foaming at the mouth to fuck him. (laughs) And it's like, why? What do you have to offer? I don't know if Austin Powers is a good one. I honestly haven't watched the movies in a long time. And I'm not saying that like, I think actually that was a parody to make fun of Bond movies to to be fair. On a unattractive societally unattractive men i'm not saying that they don't deserve to be lusted after no, i honestly think mike myers is so hot <laughs> but it's <laughs> because do. of his humor yeah I, but, i'm, I'm attracted thing. to humorous guys oh well, yeah same but it it is weird that they they up these men in a way you know what i mean an overly sexualized yeah the women in there yeah i also wanted to bring up the fact that how many women have won an oscar Mm-hmm. And looked attractive while doing it. Uh huh. Monsters Ball. Yeah. Halle Berry had to like fucking. Oh my god. Get rough. Charlize Theron had to get rough. Yeah. For that movie and like rough as in they believed okay she because she put on weight or didn't wear makeup or had her hair a different way that means she's no longer attractive. How, how brave. Yes. And so what they're like brave clapping for her that you didn't lean on your looks. Well, guess what? Their fucking acting chops were. Were there in all of the other and movies. Literally. But you weren't paying attention to it. Because she was societally attractive. Yes. Oh, God. Shit's going to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it would. Um, the other thing that I, I thought and that I saw in like a way that um, I think flips it, which is why I love this movie. We've mm-hmm. been watching. Well, number two, the two movies my daughter watches disney wise the most and i love for her is moana Mm -hmm. strong female character yep but again everybody loved maui and i was like it's not his movie (laughs) yeah he's not the main star um but frozen she loves frozen and at the very end i was watching it as i was researching for this it was on in the background and there's a part where so hans Mm -hmm. is shown as like 
lovey lovey i love you everything is perfect i'm gonna and Kristoff is kind of a fucking dick in the beginning. Yeah. You look at him and you're like, he's being like kind of mean to her. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense why he's just like treating her like that. But he's just treating her like he would a person. any other person. Yes. And Hans is treating her as I need to use you. Yep. You're an object for me to get. And spoiler alert. That's exactly what he was doing. Yes. Yeah, spoiler. Alert. You're, you're a foot place for me to like yes. step on to get yep. higher and I'm going to use you and whatever mm -hmm. but in the beginning you don't see that and I think that it's very important for young girls to know that like that is something that happens a it's lot manipulation it is mm -hmm. and it's assuming you're not smart enough to figure it out and it is believing that your worth lies in their words yes and so if they stop feeding me this it must be my fault it must be something that i did yeah or that your worth lies in them wanting to be with you right because how excited was she to mm -hmm. be wanted and like needed yeah. by him he's i mean like, to be fair i love you he was the first person she'd seen Exa in her life <laughs> well, yeah, but yeah so i mean obviously it's overly exaggerated <laughs> yeah but a trauma she's working through there <laughs> totally <laughs> But the part that I loved at the end was when everything was going on, mm -hmm. Kristoff, when he sees Hans, goes to fucking get his ass, right? Mm -hmm. And she puts her hand up. And instead of being like, no, I'm going to take care of it. For your honor, Anna. He, yes. He steps back. Yes. And lets her go over. And she's like, essentially, fuck you, bud. Yeah. <laughs> so she says, this is not verbatim. And then she punches him off the ship. Yep. Incredible. In any other movie before that mm -hmm. i feel it was always like i'm gonna defend you you're a little helpless yeah whatever and how many and he'll listen to me he'll respect me he won't respect you because that's what happens in the real world yep. how many times have you gone out to a bar mm -hmm. and your excuse has to be i have a boyfriend Woo! instead of just i don't want to i don't want i don't want you yeah, no because guess what if you say no just no i don't want you they don't respect it they get mean they get yep. violent they might harass you mm -hmm. those are all things that we've all or i keep think crossing the boundary yeah just keep pushing well maybe i can change your mind if i push hard enough uh -huh. but if you say i have a boyfriend they will be like okay oh this property's already this. taken <laughs> this property's taken gotta find a new pro that's exactly yes. it yep it's what it feels like at least mm -hmm. okay keep going i would also like to say have you watched frozen 2 yes i love frozen Kristoff 2. and frozen 2 again incredible is like you have to do this on your own yeah and i want to support you and i can't force you to bring me along and i just have to trust you mm -hmm. that you can handle this that you don't need me to rescue you and i think it's beautiful again that that was they were made an example. And at yes. the end, when there's some shit going down, he doesn't say, again, I'm going to take care of this. He says, how can I help you? Yes. How can I show up for you? What do you need from me? Yeah. So so if you're still here, straight cis men, and you're listening and you're wondering, maybe if, if this is like, oh, I had never thought about this before. And you're wondering how you can show up better. Mm hmm that mm -hmm. right there that's why i have my boobs out i'm trying to keep the the straight <laughs> cis men here for as long as possible well actually i'm using this to our advantage we're gonna talk about that okay because okay we are for <laughs> real um okay so in order to understand the male gaze obviously you need to recognize it i need to know how many people turned off the audio and went to the youtube just to see <laughs> how much my boobs were out <laughs> why it was all like a tactic we knew we'd get you here so that you could listen to the message because the message is important subscribe while you're here <laughs> so typical examples in female films are characters whose main person purpose in driving the plot is something sexy okay yep, so, yep. so this is like a very broad example uh -huh. but let's just say I don't know, you're a detective, you're a female detective, and mm -hmm. all the other male detectives are wearing detective clothes, and you're in a skimpy outfit and heels. Yep. Do you think you're going to be able to run after a perpetrator <laughs> yeah. in your fucking bodysuit and heels? You're fucking busting out of that top, lady. Yeah, yeah. But... Are you comfortable? The <laughs> no! <laughs> no! And you know you're not. Right. And so maybe subconsciously what we're taking in as the viewers is... She's there for her body and not for her ability to do the job that she's supposed to be doing. And your comfort doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. It's you, how you appear does. Your your primary motivation is resting on being either a helper and a piece of eye candy or the romantic interest of the protagonist, mm -hmm. the main character, the man. Yeah, we are the supporting role of just 
of society. Here's another example. Let's. That's why I'm so fucking passionate about being the goddamn main character. I know it. I know it. And as we fucking should be. Another example. Okay, let's think about, I don't know, beer commercials, Ooh. advertising and beer, beer in general. Let me tell you something in my, in my personal life. And I have had cars so many as well. cars as well. Well, things that are male, mm-hmm. typically for men, mm-hmm. which again, it's so confusing because I feel like there's a chicken and an egg thing. Yep, yep, yep. Because people look at me and Corey, I primarily drink beer. Not anymore. I really have these other drinks that I like. But mm-hmm. before that, I would drink beer. Corey loves wine. Mm-hmm. And we would get told all the time, so weird that you guys, like, Corey is a wine drinker and you drink beer. Like, that, you just don't see that typically. And I was like, is it weird? <laughs> is it because these we're both drinks. alcoholics? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, like, these are what? drinks. But people would be like, that's a girl drink and that's a boy drink. And you yeah. guys are switching them. And that's funny to me. And I was like, but huh. why is it because wine is sweet and beer shows women boobs. with their titties <laughs> out? <laughs> yeah. Like, beer, boobs, <laughs> wine, women. What are, you, what are you missing? I'm confused. So it was just always so weird to me because I'm like, I didn't know that beer was inherently for men. I understand that more men probably drink it. But again, how much of that was influenced by the media you're consuming? Mm-hmm. It's like, if you drink this Bud Light. You get tits in your face <laughs> yeah. whatever. You're in a motorboat by the end of the night. By God, I swear. <laughs> I swear to God. So it's just. It comes with a pair of tits. <laughs> this boob has tits. This boob has tits. <laughs> Guess what? Out of these milkers, beer. <laughs> My boobies shoot beer out. They do. Okay. Um, so even then. You're using the bodies of women to sell a product. So mm-hmm. it is, uh, I mean, you're using, it's a, you're again, yep, making this an object. Your body is going to sell me my beer. Yep. What? It is so bizarre. And it works. It works almost every time. And it's targeting. Sex sells. Sex sells. But is it sex? Are we watching two people fucking that sells? <laughs> or are we looking at women's bodies mm-hmm. and equating that to sex? Because mm-hmm. guess what? Boobs are inherently sexual. They mm-hmm. were sexualized by men, but they're primarily, their use is to feed children. We can't even do that I anymore. I can't give my children beer. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We can't even do that comfortably. I remember being like, I can't comfortably feed my child. I would go and sit in a bathroom mm-hmm. to feed my baby because the way that men would stare at me, even when I was covered, but they're like, I just know that titty's out. I know there's a titty out under that blanket. I smell and I was it. like, I, I, smell, I it. smell the beer. <laughs> and I was like, hey, can I just feed a baby in public? Sure can't. You can't. Sure oh, well, can't. You can. Not unless you're going to feed me too. Get that other titty out. <laughs> Also, I love that we keep using a country accent because here's the thing. Well, if you beer, are country boobs, <laughs> if you do America, car, <laughs> if you are still here, cis straight men, okay? I don't know if they were ever here to be. <laughs> I know, but if you are here, if your girlfriend put this on in the car <laughs> for you <laughs> and you're coming to our show, apologies. Uh oh. Please don't yell that I look like shit at the end because I know. <laughs> But I feel like like. you should take offense to the fact that that's how they're targeting you. You absolutely should think that that you you are are so sex driven by titties. Yes. That you will buy any product that they stick a pair of boobs beside. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Stop fucking. Stop being so shallow. Yeah. Because you're playing right into them. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. It should run you. (laughs) You fuck a Bud Light and rock. <laughs> okay, this is another direct quote. So it says, portrayals that bend to the male gaze show women as passive, vapid, highly, sexual, highly sexualized, mm-hmm. or other stereotypical versions of womanhood. Mm-hmm. They function secondarily to the primary male Canada- candidates. <laughs> Canadian oh, Canada. <laughs> the secondary male Where they sell beer Canadian. without boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Canada. I actually don't know. I'm, I'm sure that they just have women in bikinis and like fucking wool hats. <laughs> like fur hats. It's cold here, but them titties are still out. <laughs> it's boobs, eh? <laughs> boobs and beer, eh? Covered in maple syrup. <laughs> That's hot. Honestly. That's sticky boobs. <laughs> sticky boobs. Sticky boobs. <laughs> I'm fucking in. 
<laughs> fucking in the boo. <laughs> Okay, uh, the primary male characters and or focus their attention on pleasing these men or competing with and besting other women mm-hmm. to get the desired male affection or mm-hmm. lust. I love that every time we do talk about boobs, we are actively doing what we're telling people to stop doing well, by sexualizing it- <laughs> boobs. <laughs> Sorry. Well, we're also flawed. Yeah. Boob loving people. Okay. Oh my God. Because we're kind of gay. <laughs> yeah. And I blame the society and that's why sierra drinks beer <laughs> it's for the boobs they got me they fucking got me dude they got me too um okay but for real we're gonna talk about the effects of the male gaze now mm-hmm. so it's vital to get a full sense of like what the ramifications of the male right. gaze to recognize how the representations of women within film and various other forms of media filter out from those movies magazine layouts um, other images to inform how women are viewed by society at large. Here's a question I have. How many men or women have tattoos of naked men, partially naked men on, on their body? Probably not a lot, right? <laughs> I hope not. How many pinup tattoos do you see? Yeah. And what do they look like? What? Yeah. They're Wha- fucking. And what's the purpose of them? Right. I mean, if you have a pinup tattoo, I'd love to know. And I have seen a lot that are like twisting it uh-huh. to be like, this is a feminist one. And yeah. again, the, we're I'm not like, saying that you we're, we'll get to the end part. We'll, yeah, we'll it's, wrap an it up. Ex- it's definitely an example. I still think they're cool. You know what I mean? Like no, a they- pinup tattoo can still be cool and like a dope piece of art. But the fact that they're popularized and there isn't an equal Male, male counterpart yeah that's, that's the, part the part that i'm question. that's the part that i'm asking about yeah we're not judging the tattoo no we're not just at pointing all. out my friend has one and she's very beautiful and she's actually your friend or the tattoo both both. <laughs> <laughs> both but i'm just saying it's that part that we need to think about in no way in any form of this should you hear anything we're saying and immediately jump to we're shaming it we're judging it Mm-mm. we're any of those things i think it's just fun to be able to use Zoom these out. pieces to question things mm-hmm. like that. That's something I've never questioned. Why don't we have male counterparts and why aren't they as popularized? Because people don't sexualize dicks the way that they do boobs. They, Could you no, imagine? my God, literally. They're like, you know what? Women love dicks. We're going to start putting <laughs> dicks everywhere. Everywhere. We're going to start making wine bottles shaped like scrotums. Okay. <laughs> And women They're are gonna like, sell like hotcakes because they love to put their mouths on them. That's what I know. Ah! <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And that's why it doesn't happen because we don't sexualize male body parts the way that, you know. Well, and also, we do we females. T- for a lot of us, I think that we're not conditioned to see men as just sex objects. Right. I want them to do the dishes. <laughs> I want their money, I guess. <laughs> or that's what society wants you to believe. Right. Um, so. There's actually a part about that that says is it? That the women are reduced to either being like gold diggers or mm-hmm. just bimbos mm-hmm. and just like mm-hmm. all of these things that again is just like I need a man mm-hmm. is you know fucking annoying. I blame Greece. <laughs> I need a man. My it's heart is yeah. set on you. Yeah, you're right. But he says he needs a no. He well, doesn't. Does no, he? but she does say you better shape up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. Despite the fact that women make up over 50% of the population, the male gaze relegates women and girls to the position of other and really to that of a thing to have, consume, discard, ogle, Mm -hmm. cat call. Yeah. How many moms do you see giving away their sons at weddings? Mm, Weddings are a big one where Mm -hmm. I feel like we can see how this all played out as like a as almost you're an object. And again, I I, I played into it. I had my dad give me away, but it wasn't even like that. I don't think. No, I mean, you know what? I've you never belonged still, to any of you. <laughs> you can still participate in a tradition with, and also understand where that tradition came from and yes. how it's kind of like. And icky. use your voice to actively go, like, say, hey, maybe if we're going to continue doing this, we yeah. assign a different meaning to it or make active change outside of it. Why am I the one that has to change my last name? Mm-hmm. And you won't. <laughs> and, I, and I refuse. <laughs> Surprise, I still have it. <laughs> Um, is it harmful? Well, let's see. Uh, the male gaze? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Many would agree that the underpinnings of the male gaze are deeply sexist, Mm -hmm. patriarchal, and misogynistic, and that its influence continues to be pervasive. Let me just use an example again. When we first started putting ourselves on videos, I won't say who the person was, but I did have a person. He was a cisgendered heterosexual male. Tell us. You should wear skimpier clothing. You should... You should put make your thumbnail something that would catch attention to be like, oh, look at you know what I mean? And I said, ew. But he's like, you'll get views that way. You'll get so many views. And I was like, the people From who? who would attract would be attracted to those things to view us. I don't want here. Right. This is not a space for them. Right. I don't want to. I don't want views just for views. Right. Because icky. Right. I don't want those people here. And they don't. They're not viewing me as a person they want to listen to. They're viewing me as an object they get to oogle. 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 Oogle my goodie. Stop <laughs> oogling my boogles. <laughs> so I, I remember telling that person, like, fuck no. And they were like, good luck getting popular then. And I was like, okay. Guess what? The girls and the gays show up. Yes. They fucking show up and they love it. And they love us. And they see us as people. Yep. And not as something that they can just use and then throw away when they're done with it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. And hey, again, if I'm not specifically talking to you, but you're a cisgendered man listening to this right now, heterosexual cisgendered man listening to this, Mm -hmm. obviously you're an exception. (laughs) Like you should know that. So just know. And confront other people if you would. Because we've just, uh, everything we've discussed is why they respect your voice more than ours. (laughs) Truly. I'm not even kidding about that. Um, not to mention that the male gaze has been used to really harm overtly marginalized people. Black women yes. are hypersexualized. Yes. Asian women are hypersexualized. Yes. Lesbians hypersexualized, but only if the man can try to weasel his way in there. Yeah. Th- those three are ones I see in a big way. Mm-hmm. And why? Why are and all these specific things... kinds of lesbians as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, very much so. Mm-hmm. But even that, I remember watching an episode of Jersey Shore and it was like a big thing that Vinny got with these two. Le- and he was like badgering them the whole time. There, there's, I do love that show still, but there's moments where I'm like, icky. Ew. Icky. Yeah. <laughs> so like, ugh. that one was one where I was like, didn't age well. Yeah, especially because shouldn't have, they're shouldn't have happened in the drunk as hell. Yeah. So like how much of that was just you being like, oh, fine. Yep. I'm badgered which, into this. Which again, you feel like is OK to. To say, because, you know, well, I guess that's what, you know, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, on a larger scale, it works to maintain the patriarchal structure, of course, which elevates the white male experience at the expense of women, people of color, and other historically undeserved groups. Mm-hmm. LGBTQ community. I mean, it's... Yeah. Seeing women and girls continually portrayed in this way by the male gaze perpetuates this vision. Mm. So, think about... Like, there's so many... Uh, you could see it all over the Instagram accounts that are huge that are just for objectifying yes. the people on that. Yes. And they know it and they're participating in it, which again, if you're doing that because you, that's your choice, fine. But why is that your choice? Right. Do you know why you want to do that? Do you know why you want that to be your path? Mm-hmm. Or was it kind of just, this is, I've been given these fucking milkers. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, I'm going to fucking make some money off of them. How yeah. about that? Yeah. If you're going to objectify me, at least pay me. Okay. And that's, there's a part where it's like, we can take it back. Yes. I'm going to get there. While some aspects of these portrayals may be seen by some as powerful, sexual, or beautiful, they also stem from centuries of visual objectification of women for the pleasure of men, which is why I think modern day feminism will kind of butt against that. But I mean, I think it's all about, here's the part. I'll just read it verbatim so that we can kind of. Ultimately, the question is not whether or not girls and women should be able to wear, pose, or represent themselves in whatever they want. Uh, The answer to that obviously is yes. Mm -hmm. Do whatever the fuck you want with your body. It's your body. Right. Be fucking fully naked if you want. Not in front of people who don't want to see it. (laughs) Yeah, or children. Like, (laughs) that's what I mean. People who can't consent. Yeah. But like, if you, whatever. There should be no shame in dressing provocatively and being able to own your sexuality. 
Plus, it can be argued that there can be an element element of reclaiming their own bodies when girls and women purposefully choose to take on this guise, particularly when they are doing so intentionally while fully aware of the full history. However, what critics of the male gaze may wonder is why do you want to pose and dress in this manner? Maybe it's for fun or to experiment with their sexuality or identify our identity and trying like on this role of mm-hmm. being like a sex yep person. hyper feminine or whatever sure but what's the underlying motivation who are you dressing for who is consuming your images and what do they see when they're looking at them mm-hmm. does it reinforce or challenge the idea of the female form as an object to be had or as a stepping stone what do the girls and women in the pictures and videos and in real life envision and who do they imagine watching them it's very, it's very, it's like a catch 22 because I'm thinking about how I'm dressed right now. Yeah, that's why and I'm like, it works. <laughs> yeah, no. It does. But the reason that I dress the way I did today is because I was like, I feel comfortable yes. in this. I feel comfortable wearing this. I feel pretty in this. Yes. Now, do I know somebody is going to look at me and only see me as a pair of boobs? Yeah. But probably well, less so in this community. I will say that. True. I, I feel like that's how you know you feel true. safe wearing this here. Would you feel safe wearing that at the monster truck place that you went? Yeah. And you know why? Ooh. Because I don't want to give them that control over me. Okay. Now, you're going to fucking, obj- if you're the kind of person who's going to objectify me, you're going to objectify me no matter what I'm wearing. Yeah. And I don't. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, yeah, that's. I'm tired of giving someone else. A hundred percent. That kind of authority over me. I but agree. that's what I mean by it's a qu- catch 22 because it's also like, am I playing into it still though? Yeah. But it, I would say, because I'll, I'll, I'll swing the other way yeah. on the pendulum. Back when I was showing off my body a fucking lot and sending pictures that were yep. <laughs> whatever that ended up on the internet. Was I fully comfortable in my body when I was doing that? Yes. And no, I also right. knew that I had to, to keep the person that I wanted to keep mm-hmm. and to play into this role of like, he would show me off. Right. And it would be like, that's high. I love that you're blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So I don't normally dress like that. However, I don't mind it. A night when I'm out yep. with my girls and I want to just look cute and I, and I put on a shirt that like shows a little bit more than I want yep. to. I'm not doing that. The it's all comes down to that question. Those questions of asking yourself. And I don't think that's a bad thing to do is to step back and be like, who am I doing this for? Right. Um, if you want, if you want to do it for men to objectify you, fucking that's your prerogative. I'm yeah. not saying not to. I'm just saying if that's something you don't want to perpetuate, maybe take a, an extra couple minutes or seconds or whatever you have to do and just ask yourself those questions and see if you are comfortable with what the answers are. Yeah. Why? Why are you getting dressed the way you're getting dressed? Is it because you feel good in it and you feel comfortable in it and you like it? Or is it because you're trying to impress someone, not even a man, just but anybody. other women in general? Like, yeah, are you just we trying want you to dress for you? Yes. It that should part. be all about you and what mm-hmm. you want and what you're comfortable in and what you feel good in. Yes. That's all we're saying. Mm-hmm. But you can't talk about this and negate the fact that there are mental health impacts of the male gaze so we'll go ahead and talk about those quickly um whether it's consciously or subconsciously obviously the these issues play into a self-esteem thing that we have for sure um so the object it says in fact the objectification of women and girls has profound mental health impacts and social media has become a particularly potent method of disseminating the reach of the male gaze Studies show that increasing incidences of depression, anxiety, loneliness, low self-esteem, eating disorders, self-harm, and suicidal ideation are all related to female objectification. Because I feel like at some point you are relying on those outside forms of validation. Mm -hmm. And when you don't get those hits of dopamine, it's it's like a withdrawal. Yes. And it's for something that you must have done or what's wrong with me? What have I done Mm -hmm. that now I'm not? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing that you mentioned the dopamine, because I think that that there is stuff that happens inside of our brain chemically when we do get attention like that, especially if we've been starved for it. Yes. In childhood. Yes. So it's not, I don't want you to think that it's something that's wrong with you. Please don't ever think that. And that goes back again, fucking annoying. But (laughs) this is something that has always bothered me. When people say, a girl has daddy issues. Mm-hmm. They're talking negatively about her 
and not the father. Yes. And who the fuck? I, I will never understand how that's something that is said to like you're a piece of shit because you have daddy issues. Right. She's messed up because of something someone else did. Because of something a man did to her. Yeah. Is somehow I'm going to use that against her. Mm-hmm. And it's never put back on the man. Right. And at a societal level, at least. It's right. It's very confusing to me that that's been the way that... that it's that narrative's more, gone. Yeah. And I al- mentioned oh, well, also like in um, the way we speak to children. And this is this was brought up, I think, maybe in the weird gendered stuff episode. But if not, the fact that girls, when they're assertive, mm-hmm. are called bossy. Yeah. Where yes. the boys are leaders. Yes. And so there's that terminology that is already helping you create your worldview of yourself. And that you're supposed to be passive. You're supposed mm-hmm. to be complicit. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be people pleasing. Mm-hmm. Oh, look how cute she is. It's never look how smart she is or mm-hmm. look how it's look how kind you are. You have to be kind mm-hmm. and you have to be sweet, quiet and, and sweet. And mm-hmm. and in a weird way, because I have a son who is all of those things that's mm-hmm. almost been used against him yeah. in, in a lot of ways growing up that people have been like, oh, he's going to get walked all over. But you say the same things about my daughter and you have never once said she's going to get walked all over. Yep. yep. It's very confusing. Well, she's meant to be walked all over. Right. Right. Even mm-hmm. if when they say it, they don't understand that's what they're saying mm-hmm. that's what it implies girls are the doormats and mm-hmm. boys need to get ahead boys need to walk on them mm-hmm. uh and again this is from a 2014 study entitled fathers daughters and self-objectification does bonding style matter so this is a actual study if this study found a strong link between negative eating patterns and body shame in girls who grew up with actually highly attentive but overly protective fathers Mm, mm -hmm. the researchers point to the added attention these dads placed on their daughters changing bodies and sexuality as an explanation for the girls added struggles with healthy eating and body image that's so yucky and so sad it really is but again now i'm so happy that i was like so ugly i'm (laughs) so happy that i was neglected That was never, never something that my dad. I didn't have a highly protective dad. Much attention to. I don't think he was highly protective, but he also wasn't like. He was so focused on making sure that we felt like we could do anything a guy could do. My mom as well. Yeah. Um. And and he wanted to make sure that we earned things on our own merit. Yes. And not because of his last name. Yes. Or because of. Like he didn't like the idea of us being handed something. Agre- and yeah. I feel like a lot of times there's an assumption that if a man has some kind of accolade mm-hmm. or some title, he worked for it. And if a woman does, it was given to her and that it's an extension of the man she's with mm-hmm. or came from mm-hmm. or like she it was like she won a prize. It wasn't like that she had earned Okay, again, her way there in the same way the man would have. Raise your hand if you've ever had a partner who has taken your accomplishments and made them about them and use them, yeah, and use them as a, oh, I did this. Yeah. I, I fueled your success. Yeah. You're successful because of me. Again, mm-hmm. flip you wouldn't that have switch, this if it weren't for me. Flip that switch. How many men are successful because they have somebody at home? taking care of the children, taking care of the household, taking care of whatever Mm -hmm. in a big way. And that never gets acknowledged. Right. Ever. Mm -hmm. Okay. But how can we change it? So number one is self-awareness, obviously. Just just knowing that there's a name for something and that it exists, which is why we do these episodes, can have a huge impact. Um, Plus, you know, considering its influence may offset a significant amount of its impact, which it allow you to see yourself and the function of the world simply as you are without relegating you to a supporting role. Yes. If you're um, taking this and being like, oh, I can see this in my own life. Mm-hmm. Focusing on and seeking out depictions of women and girls that run counter to the stereotypes of the male gaze also might help to shatter its hold on our collective psyches, which mm-hmm. I think is really important. And I think that's Something that we are actively doing in media, yep. the Barbie movie. Yep. I mean, there's so many things that, but goddamn, look at how that fucking went at mm-hmm. the Oscars and things yes. like that. God yes. damn it. Again. Anyone shocked by that? No. No. Ultimately, discarding the weight of worrying about being seen, who is watching, or fitting into your prescriptive, quote, female role 
lets you instead be the person you want to be. I also want to take the time to say that like all of these male female things I'm saying are just because that's how this article was written. I'm not trying to exclude anyone from that. And so if that doesn't pertain to you um, in any sort of way, just know that like take what you can from this. I'm only speaking about it this way because that's how the article did. So I think a lot of these can pertain to um, anybody who presents male or female or has grown up witnessing like being born yes female and then grew up that way before transitioning and can experience like have these experiences and Mm -hmm. also i think honestly you're probably the best people to talk to because now you can see it from both sides right and know and probably have experienced actively being treated differently and and in the other role as well and that's if you're if you're passing which i know some people like feel that they they almost can't live authentically um in the way that they want to or are because people are just like oh you're not either one of yeah the binary the traditional binary whatever societal binary which god damn that has a whole fucking that's we could a go whole another thing episode yeah okay so this we're gonna end it with this um and i'm just gonna read this verbatim Once you know what the male gaze is and how to spot it, its influence both on your inner self and your body may begin to dissipate. Plus, when you are consuming or producing various types of media, you can do so with your eyes wide open to the ways the male gaze may be playing a part in the narrative and the visual landscape, which I think is important. Mm -hmm. Let's keep our brains always working because uh, you could just ask yourself questions and be like, maybe maybe I'm not going to spend my money there because if I am, I am reinforcing uh, a belief system or a, a marketing tactic that or, maybe could be changed if now they're seeing that it's not yeah. selling or use it to or use it to start a conversation with people who maybe wouldn't think that way otherwise yeah even better you can create the vision of yourself that speaks to you regardless of who may or may not be looking ultimately the male gaze is a social construct that we can disarm by recognizing it and choosing to either tolerate or ignore it or intentionally take it on and recalibrate it as your own co-opt as your own co-opting its power to define your sexuality, agency, and worth on your own terms. Yeah. That's why I was like, dress however you want. Mm-hmm. You might feel a certain way. That's why I didn't want people to get defensive right off the bat. I'm like, wait yeah, till yeah, we yeah. bring it to the end. Hold up. Yeah. Wait. Because I think feminism. Everybody thinks it's like you have to think one certain way, and it's like I think feminism. If you want to be a stay-at-home mom and like bake it's bread the all the time, I I just want you to do whatever you want to do, but I want to make sure it's your choice you're you're following. The motivation behind your Comes choices from are, you are you, yeah. That's all. So I hope that you got something from this, and I hope that it was something. I, yeah, I th- feel like I n- it, I feel like the male gaze was something that I'm like again context clues i could probably figure it out but going into it and giving the examples in that way and kind of like deep diving into all of the areas that it seeps into i think is really helpful to again give yourself um a starting point to ask those questions totally and if they're at any point you were like you guys totally contradicted yourself because blah 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 objectifying other just know we're flawed human beings and that's oh, yeah. bound to happen. And we apologize yeah. if at any point we did, but, but we're constantly learning. And I think that's the fun of this uh, community is that mm-hmm. we can do that so openly with you and not be told like you're dumb or you're wrong <laughs> for making a mistake. You big, dumb, stupid fucking idiot piece <laughs> of shit. We do that to ourselves yeah. enough. That's true. Um, so yeah. Well, thank you. And thank you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, for hanging out with us. That's the that on the male gaze. When's the last time I said that's the that? I kind of love it. (laughs) Bringing it back. (laughs) Anyway, thanks so much for hanging out, everyone. We love you so much, and we'll see you next week. All right. We're out. Goodbye. Goodbye.